everyone it's Kelsey here and today I have the April book page it just came out today so I'm actually like right on top of the game um so this month again it's really thin but it's actually one that I'm excited about compared to March where I didn't love the book page there's not a whole lot coming out um the spring is a very slow time for publishers um but I just wasn't thrilled with the ones that were coming out but this month I'm way more excited so to get started um, with the Library Reads Top 10 Books, I'm excited about At the Water's Edge by Sarah Gruen. I'll go into more detail about that in a little bit. Um, a Desperate Fortune by Susanna Kersley. It's a about an amateur code breaker who uncovers the story of betrayal and rebellion while decrypting a 17th century journal. Um, I think that sounds really, really good. Um, then this one... Um, this author takes the eventful life of George Sand as the premise for her first historical novel set along the storied streets of 19th century Paris. This is The Dream Lover by Elizabeth Berg. Um, I don't know who George Sand is, I have to admit, um, but I love historical novels and I love Paris, so I think that sounds like it could be right up my alley. Um, Inside the O'Briens by Lisa Genova. I read her book, Still Alice. Um, years ago when it first came out, and I was really very impressed with it. Um, then I read her second book, Left Neglected, about a woman whose brain, um, she's in a car accident, and she her she can't use both parts of her brain. Um, and that was well written. I, it wasn't my favorite. I, I liked Still Alice better, which is about early onset Alzheimer's. But in this book, a family struggles to cope with the diagnosis of Huntington's disease, which has no treatment and no cure in this tender new novel. Um, so I really enjoy Lisa Genova's books. I enjoy her perspective and the way she brings these diseases into a personal light. Um, so I'm really interested to read that. And then Where They Found Her by Kimberly McCreight. Um, I'll go more into that in a little bit because there's an article written about it. But yeah, so I'm kind of excited about those. So let's skip ahead. Okay. Um, this one is called The Narrow Road to the Deep North. And it is by Richard Flanagan. Um, we just got this in at my library. Um, so I'm kind of excited to check it out. I'm really excited that we've actually got it. Um, and I wasn't super excited reading the um, book itself. Or the, the blurb about the book. But this article actually has me more excited about it. I think that's so funny when an article written about it is better than the blurb that's on the book jacket. But anyway... Um, it's about an Australian physician um, who is recollect or who is thinking back on um, his affair with his uncle's wife and his experience as a prisoner in the hands of the Japanese during World War II. So again, a um, historical novel, which totally that's my jam. But also, um, it's a World War II book, but it's also a different. Um, perspective than I've ever read before, being both a prisoner of war in a Japanese camp and told from the point of view of an Australian doctor. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Then, this book called A Reunion of Ghosts by Judith Claire Mitchell. First of all, this article was really well written. You learned a lot about the author and I thought that was really interesting. Um, but... I'm still not 100% sold on the book. I think it sounds different, but whether that will turn out to be a good book or not, I don't know. But it's basically about this family who um, six members of generations before these three sisters have all committed suicide in their 40s. Um, so it's kind of like this, the author even describes it as a 400-page suicide note, which I think could be like I said, really different in a good way or in a bad way. It just sounds very different and a little bit weird, but I'm willing to at least try it, especially if my library gets it. So that's one that I'll be thinking about and we'll keep in mind. Um, and it also has some ties to World War I um, and just these three sisters looking back into their family and 
just looking at their legacy of suicide. So, um, yeah. Anyway, moving on. This book called Born With Teeth by Kate Mulgrew, I'm actually really excited about. I don't typically like memoirs, but um, I am a huge Captain Catherine Janeway fan from Star Trek Voyager. This was the first Star Trek series that I ever watched um, with period, um, but my husband introduced me to it and I just immediately fell in love with the character of Janeway. Um, she was just like a strong, awesome character in this show and um, I don't love her in Orange is the New Black, I have to admit that, but I'm just really intrigued by her as a character. So um, reading this article made me really excited to read about her as a person. So I am excited to pick that one up. Um, all right, um, then we have At the Water's Edge, it's the new book by Sarah Gruen who wrote Water for Elephants, which I really enjoyed that book. I've never seen the movie, but I did enjoy the book. And this one is, um, a search for an elusive sea monster at the height of World War II. Um, so obviously it's got me with the historical fiction again, and, um, I had already previously liked her past historical fiction, so I'm really excited about that one. House Frau by Jill Alexander S. Baum. She um, writes about this woman named Anna who um, is married to a doctor and she has three young children. And she is an American who is living in Zurich. And she's been there for nine years. And she starts seeing this um, a psychiatrist or therapist who's wanting her to engage more with her surroundings because she just feels like, um, she's just kind of going through the motions and she apparently has multiple affairs and her, I don't know, it just goes back and forth. It sounds really interesting. I read about it in People Magazine and then I read about it again here. So I think that sounds like an interesting book. So I will definitely be picking that one up. The Children's Crusade by Ann Packer. Um, first of all, Ann Packer wrote one of my favorite books of all times called The Dive from Clausen's Pier. Um, I really, really loved that book, so I'm really excited to see a new work by her, and I just hope it's as good. And um, the article actually talks about how there's so many books now that you have to write like this great opening line, or you have to have like this racing plot line or um just like the, how the literary works right now are very different than they have been in the past and it seems like there's no room for a contemplative novel that finds drama in quiet moments but this is one of those and I actually really like those books they're definitely not quick reads they're definitely slow and methodical and you have to really um, concentrate on the book. In my opinion, that's the way I feel whenever I read a book like this. But um, her writing is just so beautiful and so... She's like a writer that you know is like sitting in a cafe looking at people and writing stories about them in her head. And just noticing all the small, tiny details of human nature. And so I'm really hoping that it continues in this book. Um, but it's, again, it's historical fiction because the story begins in the 1950s with Michigan native Bill Blair, who is completing a residency in pediatrics, and he buys 3.1 acres of undeveloped land in what will eventually be known as Silicon Valley. Um, and it just goes on from there and it tells the story of their family. So, yeah, super, super excited. Um, then Where They Found Her by Kimberly McCrate. This is actually not historical. It is a contemporary suspense. There's a body of a newborn baby girl um, that was found near a town bridge. And the local newspaper reporter recently delivered a stillborn child. But she wants to prove to her boss that she is still a hard-hitting reporter and that she can take on this case. Um, and so she tries. She she's trying to see if it's related to past a past incident that happened at this bridge is the baby from a local college student and it's been abandoned um so it just has all these different angles so i think this might be kind of a sad book but um then it turns 
kind of dark as um, a mysterious package appears in their home and then it seems like somebody is watching her every move. So I think this sounds really interesting and I will be checking that one out. And then A Slant of Light by Jeffrey Lint. It's um, a Civil War book which I... I, just from the way the article is written, it makes me a little unsure about it because it says, to be blunt, it ends just when things are getting really interesting. I don't necessarily like the sound of that, but it starts out, um, he comes, this man comes back from the Civil War and he finds that his wife has been, has sold half of the farm and she's sleeping with the hired man and it kind of goes on from there. Apparently there's a double homicide and um but i'm just not sure what it means by like it it ends just when things are getting really interesting so <laughs> i might pick that one up <laughs> and moving on to the last few books the last couple books um two of them simon versus the hopo simon versus the homo sapiens agenda um a 16 year old simon doesn't log out of his personal email on a public computer and a high school classmate reads his emails to his secret anonymous boyfriend blue and since the teen hasn't come out yet um he's got this secret and now somebody knows about it so i think that'll be really interesting and finally under a painted sky by stacy lee this is also a young adult teen book and it takes place in 1849 in rural missouri yay go missouri um and it's the 15 year old daughter or yeah a 15 year old girl Samantha Young she's the only daughter of a Chinese immigrant and her father is going to go seek um, his fortune in the gold rush and he's going out to California but then Samantha is left orphaned and penniless to make matters worse she is then attacked and through quick thinking um, she saves her own life but she accidentally leaves the attacker dead so um, she and a slave girl named Anna May escape into the frontier dressed as boys and obviously you know madness ensues so anyway that is the book page for april um i'm definitely excited about it. it's not the most exciting book page ever like i said it's kind of the slow season for publishers but um i am excited to read a few of these books just not as excited as like when the summer and fall book lists come out but I will hopefully be getting a lot of reading done in April. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again soon. And if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to see more content soon. Have a great day.